Well, the first question I have to ask you about the new single because I, is it coming out tomorrow? Am I only thinking it's coming out tomorrow? Louise? Uh, not in the UK. In the US it is. Okay. In the US and Europe it's coming out between now and different dates. Okay. So yeah. roughly a week so I can plug it? In the, are we talking UK or Europe? <laughs> no, or just all well, over. Just kind of Within the next few weeks in Europe. Okay, okay so, so it's, it's, okay. it's new, 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 new. Okay. So I have a brand new single mm-hmm. called Thank God I Found You, which um, comes out this week in the States, um, and probably within a week or so all over the rest of the world. And I'm starting my tour on February 14th, Valentine's Day, and Thank God I Found You has two versions, actually, one that's only available on the single, and it's called Thank God I Found You slash Make It Last Forever. So it's kind of like a Valentine's Day special package there so I think it's a I think people would enjoy listening to it with their mate on Valentine's Day so you are a true romantic because I was going to ask you about Valentine's Day and whether you were a real romantic girl but you obviously are I think I'm very romantic sometimes I've been accused of not being romantic but come on I write these love songs and all that I mean give me a little credit I'm a romantic (laughs) so where did this song come from what was the impetus behind Thank God I Found You. Well, Thank God I Found You was inspired by a very special person, and that's why I think it's a great sort of... uh, It ends my album. It's the last song on my album, Rainbow. And um, this is the first album I've ever made that has a happy ending. Every other album ends in complete and total misery. (laughs) For some reason, I don't know. I I didn't consciously do it, but I always had a sad song at the end of the album. And um, at the end of this album, Rainbow, there's a happy ending, and it's Thank God I Found You, which is the new single. And um, I think that definitely starting the tour on Valentine's Day is kind of symbolic of that whole thing, and the whole hopefulness and happiness of the song in terms of love and gratitude and all that sort of thing, and all that mushy ver- stuff. And it's a very direct message. I mean, thank God I found you. I mean, there's <laughs> right. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty basic. <laughs> so this this happiness vibe. This is this is you now. Are you kind of feeling very at one together? Well, actually, last night I was completely miserable <laughs> for half the night, and then the rest of the night, the morning I woke up and I had a positive vibe and outlook. And it's like you know, it's, nothing is perfect. Every day is its own thing, and um, this is a really bizarre industry and it can really mess with your mind and twist your thinking and make you paranoid and make you um you know you're very vulnerable but it is nice to be with somebody who understands how it is to be in the public eye and to have to deal with that mess because it is a complete and total mess (laughs) do you do you do you kind of freak out sometimes too because you know that scrutiny that you're under the whole time is so intense. You know, the singing is one thing, but there's a whole lot of other yeah. stuff that you couldn't probably even imagine when you started out. No, I when I first, well, I've known I wanted to be a singer since I knew that there was such a thing as growing up and having an occupation, which is basically since I was four. Um, my mother was an opera singer and a vocal coach, and you know, we. She quit doing that at a certain point, and then she kind of uh, struggled, and I didn't grow up having a lot of money or a lot of things, and I had a lot of ambition, and I started writing songs when I was 13, and I'm just a radio fanatic, and then I grew up, you know, from about that time watching videos on MTV and wanting to do that and, you know, knowing that that was my dream, and now that's what I do, and it's The music half of it is great. The fans are great. That feeling of acceptance that you get on stage um, and the warm feeling you get when you meet your fans who are really and truly um, people who admire your work is something that's hard to even explain. It's such a high. But, you know, dealing with the other aspects of the whole celebrity thing is very bizarre and it's also kind of new for me because I was really sheltered from it in the beginning because I did start out so young and I was surrounded by very powerful people and um, they kept a lot of things from me and maybe some of that was good but some of it was bad because it didn't really prepare me for how intense it is to be 
in the public eye like this. But you know what? At the end of the day, every day is its own thing, and hopefully the next day you can do something good if you're feeling down from somebody taking a shot at you or whatever. Because you eat it as a woman, you know, everything from your clothes. You know, the singing mm -hmm. almost gets left behind. I was just thinking of the American Music Awards last week, and mm -hmm. you had that fantastic dress on. And it was just all over the papers in the UK. I didn't even like, see that. And what were they? they, they oh, it was actually very nice. Actually, nobody was saying anything. Horrible, but it was kind of <laughs> in you know, your face. They really, like you know. I haven't like, even seen a picture of it. Um, you know what? I did the American Music Awards, and I had just been in. Where was it? Oh, I was in Mexico for a long time, and before that, I was like in almost every continent of the world. You know, talking about Rainbow and singing and promoting and deciding I was going to do a world tour and getting ready to put my new single out. And I didn't even know if I was going to do the American Music Awards. And then I was really honored that they were going to give me this special award. And I feel like, wow, you know, for me, this all seems like it just kind of started. And to be being honored, especially when Olivia and John was going to give me the award. So, And I also wanted to sing my song, Thank God I Found You, both versions, um, on the show. And I grew up watching the, Ameri you know, the American Music Awards. But the thing that I'm lacking in my life is time because we barely have time sometimes to decide. I, I'm like literally in the trailer before the show, you know, with everybody going, okay, what am I wearing? And you don't always get a chance to see it on camera. And people react to like, whoa, the dress was such a scandal. And I'm like, didn't seem like anything new to me. I thought I've been wearing that kind of stuff for like the past two years. What's the big freaking deal? Throw me a bone, somebody. Do you, do you have sort of designers that you kind of really uh, sort of look to? Do you kind of patronize some particular designers, or do you kind of stay away from that? Actually, the shirt I'm wearing today, which is my new favorite thing, is, uh, was made for me by someone very special to me who works for me. But more than that, she's like a member of my family. She takes care of me. She's like one of the most beautiful people I know, and she's from Brazil. And she grew up actually... She does everything. I mean, like, she shocks us every time. Every day it's like, oh, I was a nurse. Oh, I, I picked cotton in the fields and spun yarn. Oh, I made shoes. And she crochets, and we found out this other hidden talent that she has. And she crocheted this for me, and she sent it to me because she's at home now. And um, so this is my Arlette. Her name is Arlette. This is my Arlette ensemble with my Mariah and Tanya jeans here which happened to be Levi's, but I'm not doing an endorsement, of, you know. But it's become like a thing for you, hasn't it, that, with the, the cut-off? Well, I like the cut-off thing. Image. I don't know if you guys can see it. If you widen out, maybe you can see a little bit. I like the cut-off thing because you don't have to secretly unbutton them when you're sitting at the table. <laughs> <laughs> I and don't believe you. <laughs> no, but girls do that. I ain't gonna lie. I've done it many times. And you know what? It's much better to just feel like you don't have to do that. And I think that, I don't know, I did it to all my jeans, and it's fun. And I see people walking around like this in countries all over the world now, so I'm glad maybe if I've made one contribution, it's that girls don't really have to do the secret under the table thing anymore. Because I don't care how skinny you are, you unbutton those jeans if you get an extra piece of, piece of meat. <laughs> Or pasta, uh, whatever. You're gonna change lives now. <laughs> ah, okay, sorry. So the tour. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll go to the tour. Are you, to, are you gonna wear lots of lovely? Yes. I think you should let them come in a little tighter. Okay, it's just that I'm sweating like a pig. In no, fact, they're coming you can't. Just a little bit, because it's it's so. It's really. It's really hot. Awesome. Chris, if you think no, then say it. It can come in a touch tighter. Not a head okay. shot. Not a head shot, but just in. Okay. So the tour, do you get some, well, lots of glamour? Recording. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you recording? Yeah. Are you going to get to wear lots and lots of glamorous clothes on the tour? I'm going to get to wear whatever I want on the tour, and I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> no, um, we're putting it together now. We're doing glam, we're doing... Oh, how do I explain it? What's the opposite of glam? Grunge. <laughs> we're not doing grunge. Um, we're doing kitsch, we're doing glam, we're doing fun, we're doing...
things that I don't want to give away yet and let you know about because they pertain to very important elements of this show. One of them being my evil nemesis, Bianca, who is actually British, and she will be hosting the show. I didn't want her to be involved with this whole thing, but she is, so now I kind of have to deal with it and sort of like whatever she says goes. So we're putting the whole thing together as we go, but it's got a sense of humor, and not many people put together a world tour in a month, so your guess is as good as mine, but the main thing is I want my fans to have a good time. I'm going to sing the songs that they want to hear, hopefully, um, and uh, some songs that I just feel like singing from the new album that may or may not, they may or may not know, but um, I'm pretty good about doing the songs that the fans, you know, fantasy, hero, the songs that, you know, people, heartbreaker, you know, the hits, they like to hear the hits, but um, also some of my real fans request, like, some of the more obscure songs, but it's going to be about the music, but it's also going to be about having fun and uh, showing all the different aspects of my wacky personality that really needs to be put under control right now because I'm getting into my silly zone. Why is the evil Bianca British? <laughs> She's not British because of any other reason. I don't know. I had, we created a character, Bianca, in the video Heartbreaker. That's who she is for everybody out there who's like, what in the Sam Hill is she talking about? Um, she's the girl that I fight against in the Heartbreaker video. And we wanted her to be just sort of really the extreme opposite of the way that I am. And we wanted her to have some sort of an accent. And I don't know why I just started... Well, actually, I have a friend who's British, and she somewhat inspired that. And then I met a stewardess on a plane who had a similar hairdo to Bianca. And she was giving me little tips and things about how to speak and what to say. And actually, I haven't been speaking like Bianca recently, so I need to brush up on it. But Bianca's whole thing is she actually slips in and out of her accent because she's a complete fraud. So it also works. But um, she's only British because I just started spiraling into a British thing for some reason. And the stewardess was very, very inspirational. And so was my... British friend who is actually a journalist. So I think she might be interviewing me for this <laughs> as well. Does, it, does all this come out of your acting training as well, all this kind of these characters and stuff? Is that inspired by? You know, I've always done characters my entire life. When I was a little girl, I would do different accents, like my friend's parent. It's sort of hard to, it doesn't really translate in other cultures because they might not hear the subtleties. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I've always been doing southern accents since I was a little girl. I used to talk like a, a southern bell to my mama. Or I had a grandmother who talked like that, and she was, you know, girl, that top ain't fitting right on you. You need to go put on an undershirt, throw something else on top of it. And I would always just sort of imitate people and things that I heard and pick up different voices. My friend's mother from Queens, she talked like this, you know. She had a freaking attitude, but what, what do I care? You know what I'm saying? She's freaking from New York. She's allowed. So I've always had this kind of wackiness, but when I first came out, everybody was like, be really, really um, calm and just only answer in three-word sentences and be really afraid of the press because they're going to hate you and rip you to shreds, which is somewhat true, and they still do sometimes. But you know what? At least if they hate me now, they're hating me for who I really am as opposed to hating me for being, you know, someone that I'm not. But the acting training and working with my, with my um, coach, Sheila Gray, has helped me in terms of feeling more confident to be myself and letting that stuff come out. With all the glitters is coming out this year. I it? hope so. It's supposed to come out at Christmas of 2000. We're supposed to start, which is why I have to cut my tour short. Um, not that I'm cutting it short, but I'm not going to as many places as I want to. Um, especially as many warm places, because I really like to be on the beach whenever I can. But um, we're supposed to start pre-production and all that stuff very, very soon and get into casting and everything because we haven't, it hasn't been cast or anything yet. But it's supposed to start filming in May, 
and so I it's doubtful that it will get out for Christmas unless it were rushed so it will probably be spring 2001 but you never know you never ever know it's possible that um, it would come out for Christmas I've actually been working on the soundtrack because I'm also writing and producing um, six songs for it and it, the movie is called All the Glitters and it takes place in 1981 and I've been working with some people that like I've admired since I was a little kid and it's going to be an authentic kind of 80s sounding soundtrack but also the 2001 the 21st century version so we'll see <laughs> was it a tough role did you find it a challenging role I actually haven't we haven't started filming oh, yet I thought you actually, all right I'm going to no. keep you confused I thought you'd no, but well, actually, I've been working with the um, screenwriter Kate Lanier and Sheila Gray, who's my acting coach, and we sort of created the story together. And now the director, Vandy Curtis Hall, is coming and doing his draft. So hopefully, he won't completely and totally change everything we did. But um, no, he's a really great, um, and I'm really glad that he's aboard. And it's going to be fun. It's really, I mean, it's a, it's a drama. It's different. It's not going to be necessarily the same type of, you know, I do want to do, there is a comedy that I really would love to do because it would just probably be a, a great outlet. All these things are just a great outlet for me. But the soundtrack, I think, is going to be something that's, I just started, I mean, reworking on it again the other day, and I feel like I've got some really good stuff, and I'm really excited. I was in Minneapolis with Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, and also with the artist formerly known as Prince, and I don't know if that's supposed to be secret or not, but hopefully that'll work out and I'm possibly going to hook up with Rick James, so I really want it to be, like, authentic. But um, I wrote about four songs, five songs in the past two days, so now the hard part starts, making the records and doing the movie. Yes, so, oh, we can, oh, oh right, we'll stop and see. <laughs> okay. Um, Hold on. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. That's where Bianca comes but from. You, but, but you mentioned I mentioned it. Yeah, okay. Okay. We'll put a clip out of Thank God I Find You, so if there's anything. Okay. You want to say about the video, where it was shot? Okay. Well, there are two different versions for the Thank God I Found You video. One was shot in Minneapolis in the summer, and it was it was uh, the original version that's on the album, um, and it was with Joe in 98 Degrees, and it was a first, the song wasn't even done yet, and we, um, I mean, it was written, but the record wasn't mixed or anything. And we performed it in front of like, I don't know, 30, 40,000 people. And we did it twice, and the second time the crowd was singing along, so that was really cool. And then the remix video was shot in Hamburg and in New York. It features Nas and Joe, and it's a completely different thing because it's like a club feel, very natural. We weren't done with the record yet either. I was in the studio the night before singing, and um, the rap wasn't even on it yet. So... I kind of like to do things spur of the moment, but it's a fun video and there's a really cute puppy in it. And some really nice shots of my shoes. <laughs> the two most important elements. Exactly. For any girl's Animals video. Animals and shoes. Especially if they have a good heel. Got a good heel and some feeding or some stones. Studs. You're happy. <laughs> yes. That was great, Mary. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. It was nice talking to you.